Hey everybody, Steve here. Welcome to part two in my series on the Radio Master TX 16S, partnered up with this amazing Emacs Tiny Hawk Freestyle 2. Could this possibly be one of the coolest combinations in quad history? I don't know, but I'm anxious to test it out. In video one, we use the CLI to get these guys bound, and uh, they're uh, buddies now, and they know how to talk to each other. What we need to do now is set the Tiny Hawk up so that we can uh, have a successful maiden flight. So there's some things that we need to do, and then there's some things that are optional. So I will make it very clear in the video as to where we draw the line between the must-haves and the optionals. As a prerequisite to this video, I'm hoping that you have at least a very basic understanding of the Betaflight software. And if you do not, then please see the description below. You are going to need to do some configuring in Betaflight to make all of this work. So check the description below for a link to how to use Betaflight. And in addition to that, I do have a 15, yes, you heard that right, a 15 part series on the RadioMaster TX 16S, where we start from absolute scratch and work all the way through some pretty technical stuff. Then we have some fun with it. And, uh, and now we're putting it to practical use here with this little Tiny Hawk freestyle too. Well, I'm starting to talk like Bill Clinton. I don't mean to talk like Bill Clinton. Those of you who are old enough, you remember who Bill Clinton was. I did not fly quads with that woman. Uh, anyhow, all right, enough with the bad jokes. Let's get that guy out of here. Let's get this guy in here. Let's get this. Uh... So what we're going to do now is we're going to add some functionality to make flying the Tiny Hawk a possibility. And we're going to have to add some switches and add functionality to those switches. So what we're going to do is we're going to add an arm switch. We're going to add a flight mode switch. And I don't know whether this thing has a buzzer or not, but we're going to add a buzzer. All right, so what we are going to do is this is the model button. We're going to long press on the model button to bring up all the model sub screens or sub menus, whatever you want to call them. If you look up here, it kind of resembles tabs. Uh, on your computer and as I push it'll go through the different tabs and if all of that looks scary and intimidating don't worry just check out my 15 part series and I will explain all of the stuff that you need to know as it pertains to quadcopters all right I'm gonna stop on inputs this is the input screen okay so inputs the first thing that we need to do is define what we're using to input each action okay for the first four that you see here we're using the sticks these are the sticks right here and there's four possible um, ways you can move the sticks and there are four things that are already predefined the aileron the elevator the throttle and the rudder those are the absolute basic four things that you need for multi-rotor flight what we're going to do now is we're going to add inputs and what we're going to do on the input screen is we're going to define which switches we want to use. All right, so let me give you an example. We're going to use the wheel and we're going to wheel down to input five. And I'm going to click on it. And I have to click again so that I can edit in the field. And this input is going to be called arm. And there it is. And then when I'm done typing, I can just hit return so that it'll let me go to the next field. So here I'm going to name it and now I'm going to go to the next field and I'm going to click and this is a very important one because this is the one where we decide which switch we want to use for this thing that we're calling arm and the radio doesn't know what arm is yet. That's something that we'll define in beta flight. So you can either come to the field and go like this and scroll through all of them. But the TX 16 S makes it much, much easier because instead of scrolling through, looking for the um, switch that you want to throw, you just basically throw the switch. There's SF. If I were to have selected this one, that would have been SE, but I want SF. Okay. And I, because this is a two position switch and it's perfect for arming and I'm going to go ahead and go like that. And now I'm pretty much done with this one. So what we have done, is we have said, hey radio, um, we want to add some functionality, and what we're gonna what we're gonna add is a switch with two positions, and we're gonna call it something called arm. And you don't know what arm is yet, but we're not gonna worry about that. All right, let's do another one. On input six, I'm call this F. 
So this one we're going to call flight mode and I'm going to come down here and I'm going to select it. And I'm just going to pick a switch that I'm used to, which is the SG switch. And there it is. There's flight mode. Select it. I'm good here and I can come out and there we go. We have just added two switches. All right. So what we've done is we've added two inputs. So now let's go to the next screen, which is mixes. So what mixes does is further define those inputs. And the easiest way to describe that for you is to just do it. All right. Go back a screen inputs. We did arm on SF on input five. So if we come back here, so we're going to go to channel five and we're going to select it. And now we're going to further define arm. So right now I have defined armed. So let me just keep going down here for a second and this will be clear in, in a minute. I'm going to go like this and I'm going to throw my switch. And I'm going to throw my switch in the position closest to me like that. That's the position that I want to be armed. All right. So notice how the radio picked up on that and has called it SF down. So now I'm going to go like that. So I'm going to go back. So now what I want to do is cheat. I'm going to hold down this and I'm going to say copy. I'm going to hold it down again and I'm going to say insert after or let's do insert before. It doesn't really matter. And this one I'm going to call disarmed. And I want it disarmed when my switch is in the back position. Like so. The radio has picked up on that and it says SF and I'm going to go ahead and say yep. And then I'm going to return out. Now it probably makes more sense to be able to define everything to you. Let's go back to inputs. You can think of inputs as the way our fingers communicate with the radio. Our fingers are going to either flip a switch, turn a dial, or move a stick. So that's the talking between our fingertips and the radio. When we get to mixes, this is the radio talking to the receiver on our quad. What mixes does is it takes our inputs and it maps it to a channel on the receiver. So now channel five, the information that we're sending to our receiver, and remember our receiver is sitting right here on the quad. Our receiver at this point understands that we have something called arm and we're supposed to do something when SF is up and SF is down, but it doesn't know what to do with it yet. We're going to define that in beta flight. So we've got one more. It's the trickiest one of all. It's a three position switch. And if we go back to inputs, we see that we put our flight mode on SG. Okay. So let's come down here. Channel six. Okay. So the first mix name is going to be angle. And now what we're going to do is we're going to come down and we're going to define the specific switch position angle mode. Well, angle mode. I want to take my SG. I like when angle mode is all the way back. That is now angle mode. Do that to confirm and then back. And now I have two more of them to define. All right. So where the word angle comes from, that is one of beta flights, three flight modes. Beta flight has three flight modes, angle, horizon, and acro. So we're going to go ahead and do the entries at this time for horizon and acro. All right. I turned up the speed there because um, I'm sure the data entry would probably have killed you if we did it real time. All right. So now that it's done, let's take a real quick recap. Inputs. We define two inputs. We define what we define that the SF switch was going to be used and we define that the SG switch was going to be used. That's pretty much what we did here on mixes. We've further defined those switches and we've assigned them to channels so that we can communicate with the receiver. So what we've said here is SF in the up position is going to be disarmed. SF down is going to be armed. And then on channel six, SG up is angle, SG middle horizon and SG down is acro. So now absolutely none of this means a hill of beans unless we go and we further define it in beta flight because our flight controller is running a software called beta flight. And that's the key to our quad flying. So let's go ahead and fire up beta flight and get these two talking. 
All right, quick recap as to where we're at. We've got Betaflight up and running on the left side of the screen. We've got our uh, TX16S on the right side of the screen. Our TX16S has been bound to our little quad. Here's our little quad here. And our little quad here is actually plugged into Betaflight so that when we move a stick, you can see it move. One important thing to know is that if you're flying mode two, um, that when you move this stick, the throttle moves. That's the the um, light blue one. And then when you yaw, make sure that the yaw is moving. And when you pitch, make sure pitch is moving. And when you roll, make sure roll is moving. If it's not right, check your channel map right here. Check your channel map right there and make sure that you're set up for the right one. FR Sky is A E T R. All right, that's the one that's selected. So make sure that you're set up for AETR. So now you have seen examples of where there's channel one, there's channel two, there's channel three, and there's channel four in order. But check it out, we've added some additional stuff. When I flip the switch that we set for ARM, AUX1 moves. When I flip the switch that we set for flight mode, AUX2 moves. Look at that. AUX1 and AUX2 are now associated with specific switches because we define the mapping of those switches on the mixes page. So let's take this one step further. All right, so if we switch over to the mode screen, it looks like the fine folks at Emacs have already given us a good start. So let's just take a look at the first one, ARM, because that's our two position switch. If we go back to receiver and we flip the switch, we see that that switch is coming in on aux one. So just make a mental note of that, go back to modes, and arm is set up for aux one. It's actually already set up, so it's going to work right out of the box. So pay attention to this little cursor on this whole little line right here. I am currently in the disarmed position. When I flip it to arm, cursor shoots way over here, okay? It's kind of a digital servo. So now you see that it shot way over here and we have a we have an opportunity to change this range if we want to but we don't really necessarily need to as long as arm is in that range and disarm is way way over here so that's our arm switch so let's take a look at our next switch which is a three position switch if we go back to receiver um that's aux 2 come back to modes so it's actually in horizon mode right now so what i want to do is if i flip the switch back it's now in angle mode and look angle mode is highlighted here if i switch it to the middle it's in horizon mode and it's right here and if i switch it to the bottom it is now in acro mode and if you're like what the heck is acro mode well acro mode is the third flight mode it's the default flight mode mind you for beta flight okay so be, being as though it is the default they don't need a another square here for it all right so what you want to do as a beginner is make sure you're not in acro mode as a beginner you might want to start in angle mode that is a contentious comment too because people who have been flying forever will tell you don't even bother with angle mode or horizon mode it's just a crutch you're going to build up bad habits yada 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 blah 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 i just say learn how to freaking fly Okay, and, and the differences in the modes are is that the angle mode has an auto leveling feature. It will always try very hard to keep the quad level. Now, it doesn't have GPS, so it's not going to get a dead lock like on a DJI Mavic or something like that. It is going to make an effort to try to keep it level for you. The crutch here is that angle mode will not allow you to turn upside down. As a matter of fact, I think it will only allow you to turn a certain degree. Angle limit 30. I'm don't know 100% if that's the if that is in degrees or not but basically when you're flying in angle mode and you try to if you were to try to flip it upside down you wouldn't be able to when you graduate to horizon mode uh, it also has auto leveling but you would be able to do flips and rolls and stuff like that it's just that the second you let go of the stick it's going to try to auto level for you so if you're trying to fly like upside down or inverted or whatever you call it um, it's going to be tough for you to do so because it's going to always try to be auto leveling when you graduate to acro mode, acro mode, it's all you. It's all your stick movements. You fly the sucker upside down and let go of the stick. It's just going to keep flying like that. There is no auto level functioning in acro mode. So this is kind of the difference between the three modes. And then as you can see, 
there's a gazillion more things that you can do. It looks like they've got a beeper set up. I didn't set up the beeper in the uh, in the video for purposes of time, uh, but it's obvious here that uh, you could add another switch in your inputs and your mixes and set the beeper up as well. What the beeper does is if you're flying your quad and you crash it someplace, um, you flip the switch to the beeper and the quad will make an audible noise. So you can see that there's a whole bunch of things that you can do here. Lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of stuff. All right, typically I like to just go like that, hide the ones I'm not using. And for my purposes here, I'm not using this one. I'm not using this one. I can set those up later. The number one mistake that people make in modes is that they'll go through the time of setting all this stuff up and then forget to hit the save button. So just double check. There's armed, armed, angle mode, horizon mode, acro mode save congratulations that is all of the mandatory stuff that you need to get this guy out and go flying all right here we are we're 15 minutes in i've got plenty of bonus material for you but i've got another 15 minutes worth of bonus material so i'm gonna cut it here and make a third video for all of the things that we can do to get this thing dialed in uh, it flies um, but it's got some issues and I want to address those issues in the next video, not to mention some other cool stuff that we're going to do uh, to make your flight experience safer and more fun. So I'm Steve wrapping up video two here. I hope you benefited from the video. I hope you got something out of it. If you liked it, please like, comment, and subscribe. And if you really liked it, hit the bell for future notifications. And if you feel up to it, do me a favor, share the video. Tell somebody out there that Steve's making videos about drones. All right, I'm signing off. I'll see you in the next video.